Hello and welcome to the incredible macrame Blue Galaxy class. In this class we will learn how to create an impressive micro macrame earring set using the basic micro macrame knots. This free tutorial is offered as a complimentary video and is a part of my new incredible macrame comprehensive class demonstrating polymer clay techniques combined with knotting. The incredible macrame class is available in my Polypedia Online Express.com website. Once you master three or four basic knots, you can create your own patterns and designs and combine them with your own custom made polymer clay beads. No need for special tools or materials, just cords and some beads. Ready to start knotting? We will start with mounting our cords onto the metal findings. The cord length is about 40 cm, which are about 16 inches. The cord will be folded in half, so you will get half of that size. The number of cords depends on the width of your work. If you want a wider design, use more cords. I used 5 cords, 4 blue and 1 pink. Fold your cords in half and mount them into the holes using the lark's head knot. The lark's head knot is the simplest knot. It is made by folding the cord in half and threading the loose ends of the cords through the loop formed by the fold. These knots are used a lot to mount cords onto another cord, rings, holes or any other mountable object to start a micro macrame project. You can start mounting your cords from the back side of the finding using the loop or using the cord edges. If you do not have a metal finding with holes, you can create your own using polymer clay and cutters. Start by securing your work to a foam board using pins. You can use cork sheets or a binder clipboard. We will start by dividing our work into two groups. We want a symmetrical design onto the earring. Each group will have five cords. I'm taking the first cord from the right. This cord will be my holding cord, while all the other vertical cords will be working cords and will be wrapped around the holding cord. I'm using the double half hitch knot for the knotting of the complete earring, going from the right towards the center and then left towards the center. The direction of the knotting is exactly the opposite when working with each side. Let's start with the first knot. I'm taking the first cord from the right side and placing it on the working cord, creating the number 4. Then I'm wrapping the working cord from under up and around the holding cord, threading the cord end through the loop and pulling up now wrapping the same cord around the holding cord again, forming a four up and around into the loop and tying up. These two wraps equal one double half hitch knot. After finishing with the first knot, I'm taking a pin and securing onto the board and continuing to the next working cord in line, forming a four with the holding cord. Working cord comes from under, up and around, into the loop and tied up once and again forming a four. Working cord comes from under into the loop and tied up. Now we will continue with this knotting until we reach the center point with the pink cord. Note that my left hand is the one holding the holding cord all across this row until we change the side. 
I'm adding beads in between the knotting. The beads are a nice decorating element. This time I'm adding a bead onto the holding cord. You can add beads on the working cords as well. Now I'm continuing to the pink cord, comes from under, up and around into the loop and tied up. The key is to keep tension on the holding cord in my left hand when wrapping cords around. After completing one side, I'm continuing to the left one, starting with the left top cord as the holding cord, while all the other cords will be wrapped around it as working cords. Tying two wraps with the working cord to create one double half hitch knot. Don't be discouraged if this knot isn't easy to make, it takes a little bit of practice to get it evenly done. Note that when we're doing the knotting from the left side towards the right, my right hand is the one holding the holding cord all through this row and my left hand is changing the working cords. Continue with the knotting until you reach the center point. Adding a bead to the holding cord and continuing with the knotting on the pink central cord. Now we have new two central cords, blue cords, and we will connect them together using the double half hitch knot, similar to what we did in the previous rows. We've completed two rows, one from each side, right and left. Now we can repeat in creating a new row going from the right towards the center and from the left towards the center. I took the first cord from the right as the new holding cord for this row while all the other cords will be wrapped around it as working cords. I will go silent to let you concentrate on the knotting. After reaching the center point, I am moving the cords away and starting with the left side, taking the first cord from the left as the new holding cord, while all the other cords will be wrapped around it as working cords using the double half hitch knot. In the double half hitch knot, the color of the working cord is the one determining the color of the knotting. As you can see, this was a pink working cord, so the color of the knot is pink. And this is a blue one, so the color of the knot is blue. When reaching the center point, you can see that we have space between the cords, so I'm adding more beads. Then closing with a double half hitch knot on the two central cords. Now we can continue to the last row. I am leaving two cords behind, one of each side. This will create a more narrower design. I am taking the first new cord from the right 
as my new holding cord, not counting the one that we left behind, and starting a new row of double half inch knots. Now moving on to the left side, leaving the first one aside and starting with the second one as the new holding cord for this row. When reaching the central point, I'm joining the two cords together. Since this is the last knot, I'm securing it well. Now we can take the work off the board and continue to the trimming and the melting of the wax cords. Complete the two earrings before you do the final trimming and the melting. When you're improvising and inventing your own pattern, one earring will give you a reference on the other one. Use sharp scissors to cut the end of the cords. I'm using a lighter to melt them because I'm working with wax cords. You don't need more than one millimeter of cord from the edge. Then the melting will be easier. If you leave a long cord, the melting will leave a big ball of cord and it will not be comfortable and not aesthetic. My leftovers were too short to use for another project, but if yours are longer, keep it. I'm taking a lighter and adjusting the size of the flame if necessary. This is too big leaving a small flame and then slowly melting the cord. After the cord is melted a bit, I'm pressing with my finger to push it to the back side of the work. Use caution when working with fire. Melted cord can be hot on your finger. The cord may change its color a bit when working with heat and fire. So use the fire for a minimum amount of time. Now I'm taking a pointy tool and creating a hole to insert my ring. Complete with the second earring and that's it, you've completed your project. I hope you enjoyed this simple and easy class. For the full list of links and materials, please refer to the video description below for more details. If you're interested in additional projects combining polymer clay along with micro macrame knotting, please refer to my website. I'm here to help, so if you have any question, I'll be happy to assist. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.